Over the next six weeks or six modules, we're going to have a look at uh, cloud and Azure infrastructure in general. We're going to, in the second module, in the second week, uh, have a look at the core Azure services that um, are usually being used, um, followed by the core solutions and management tools. Um, overall, um, there's going to be some IoT um, quickly in there, some ML, um, but mostly overall in these in module two, three, four, and five, um, that's very, very focused on how do we really do these things? How do we really use these services? And which service, services do we use for what? Um, and when should we maybe not use cloud? the service? It's built up by geographies. Inside of these geographies, we have regions. Regions are usually paired up. And inside of a region, we have multiple data. If you had a customer or suddenly a team, um, a new subsidiary um, of your company in a region that you didn't have a data center in, but let's say for compliance reasons, they weren't allowed to use your data center, then you had to go and get a new data center. You had to rent something, a colo somewhere. Um, you had to then uh, but also go and maintain that and figure out how to yeah, do all of that. Cloud gives you the benefit of being able to deploy something within minutes in a new region that you haven't had any um, we have to... our Linux VM um, where we have um, our SSH session configured to, um, yeah, this VM that does not have a public IP. As we've seen before, it's our .5 private IP. This VM is not on the internet, but we can still remote into it. If this was a Windows VM, we could still remote into it via this browser. And um, because we configured it on the um, on the bastion, we can also what use we MSTSC about things that come with a domain or DNS name needs to be globally unique. What do we know about what David thinks about globally unique names? Randomize them. Yeah, otherwise your naming convention is just going to fall over. After creation of this function app, we could, and usually um, you would, um, especially if it's a publicly exposed function, um, you would map a custom domain onto this with a C name and then um, UFH something something dot is a website net could become um, uh, in our case for example um, app dot Argos hyphen security dot cloud shell here in the top right and we can then start and typing um, start and type uh, PowerShell commandlets for example from our phone against our Azure subscription as we can see. I can run get a ZVM on my phone and see all the uh, virtual machines in my environment and then do something with it. I might have a management, uh, maintenance or ops script here um, in my cloud shell. And um, instead of typing everything, I can just go and execute that script to maybe restart or stop it. It is a managed service to store secrets, keys, and certificates. Managed service means pass means keyboard is on the internet by default. You still need to authenticate and be authorized to see everything, but it is a public facing service. Uh, it's fully managed by Microsoft. There's no server, no HSM you need to deploy on um, hardware security module, HSM, um, that you need to deploy, configure, maintain, patch, name, Sentinel, being someone who looks over things. Sentinel's main data source, and we can see here, it says selected workspace, is log analytics. 
we haven't really spoken about log analytics, but essentially on Azure, all the information from agents and infrastructure and custom logs and even third party um, applications, they, they are usually required to be sent into log C overall the role assignments here, who has what permissions, I can see all the roles that exist, quite a few of them, to allow for least privilege, yeah? So whatever access you need to give somebody, there will likely be a role that is similar to what you need. And then you can create your own custom role. This is still not possible via the portal here, but, Via, the, via PowerShell or the CLI, you can actually create a adoption role. framework. You can find the cloud adoption framework at aka.ms forward slash CAF, C-A-F. And what it is, it's a collection of knowledge, basically. Documentation, implementation guidance, best practices, tools, knowledge that Microsoft and partners accumulated over the years to guide people in their journey into the cloud. It's specific to Microsoft Azure, but not exclusive. Yeah, stuff that you read in here will apply to other of these recommendations. We can also create an alert. So whenever we get an alert of a certain type in here, in Advisor, we can say create alert, and every time we get this, something can happen. Yeah, we can get an email, we can send a message to um, Teams or Slack um, or something like that, right? We can um, create alerts in here quite easily based on recommendations. Every time. day at, let's say, 7 p.m. Melbourne time, I want this VM to be automatically shut down. I'm going to say save and it's going to update the schedule and um, in a few seconds, done. Now, every day at 7 p.m., this VM is running. That VM is going to get shut down automatically. Don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm.